All right, all right. Looks like we're live. Myth Vision Podcast. I'm your host, Derek Lambert. I've got Professor James D. Tabor joining us. How you doing, James? I'm doing great, Derek. Uh, you're a little earlier up there than I am, but uh, mm -hmm. what is it, 4 o'clock Eastern here on the uh, right coast, and you're on the left coast. So, uh, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, uh, actually, right. Yeah, so, uh, so we're going to talk about the Mark course not so much just, I mean, we've talked about it plenty and there's a lot of stuff out there, but what I wanted to do is talk about this phenomena that's taking place with the Mark course that I don't think take place, takes place anywhere else. And uh, it could be some of your other professors would want to model after this if they are willing to do it. And some already have to some degree, but let me, you know about a little of it, but I don't think the group does, the audience. You know, when you and I as creators, we go on YouTube and let's say we put out a video and it gets 10,000 views in one day. And then you look at comments and it's like 236 comments. You go, oh my God. I go through them sort of like quickly and look at them, especially when I first started. But sometimes, you know, a video will have a thousand comments, but it isn't just the number. Let's say you read the first 50 to get an idea. Right. What happens is, you know, the old expression of Clint Eastwood, the good, the bad and the ugly, that movie, they're like really good, like really thoughtful people that notice things and are contributing really bad, meaning not even on the subject. They didn't clearly even listen. Maybe they read the title. Like, what do you mean creating Mark? You know, <laughs> not like they <laughs> dug into it at all. Others are just wanting to promote their own stuff. So they'll put stuff up that has nothing to do with the video. Lots of people do that. Oh, Tabor gets a lot of views. Maybe somebody read my comment. I'll piggyback on him. And then some are just nasty, just ugly. Mm -hmm. And they'll say things very insulting to me, not personally so much like, oh, his hair's stupid or I don't like his face. Not so much like that, but more trying to tell me something that is so well known or so obvious and they're just so wrong on, but like, how would I ever address it, you know? And remember when I first started, you were helping me get the channel started and I was like answering comments and you said- I was like, mm -hmm. uh, you probably need to think that over because if you keep it up, it's just endless, especially if you have somebody who's antagonistic because yeah. then they're just thrilled that you got, they got a response. And then it's just back and forth. And then, you know, how it's all social media is like that. It's just crazy. So here's what we do in the Mark course. We've had three of these. We have these monthly Zoom meetings. And I can take up to 500, which we, we usually get 100 or I think we had 200 for the first one. But anyway, but it's like 50 people on a screen and I can vary the screens. Instead of it being like a webinar, where I go, okay, I've got 20 questions I want to answer. And you're just looking at me like now talking. Right. We're spread out in a kind of like stadium of little thumbnails. And you'd think, well, 50 on a screen. You know what? It isn't that bad. Just on my laptop, I can see everybody, mm -hmm. you know, and I can see their names down below. And then if they raise their hand, they move up to the top. It's so cool. I just love it. But here's what's happening, Derek. Like you helped kick it off on the first one and that was more formal because we were just getting started and we'd already got the questions arranged and all that. Well, now they've been sending in questions and I'm distilling them. And let me tell you, Derek, these students are so sharp. These are people, and I know some of the people listening right now, they've been studying the New Testament or the Bible or maybe we're in a church or even just, you know, intellectual study for right. years. These people have background, they have depth, and their questions are so good that it's like you're doing an advanced seminar on Mark in the Zoom session. And I'm telling you, people are sitting there nodding their heads and following, and, you know, you don't have to speak. You don't even have to put your camera on if you don't want to. I can play a video, I can put up things, I can screen share. I can show them things like somebody might mention a manuscript. I could say, hey, wait, let me put that up right. you know, on the spot right there. So this Sunday, 
at noon Eastern, uh, my time, East Coast time, uh, which we kind of pick because all over the world, different time zones and so forth. We're going to do a live Zoom. I'm on, I think we went an hour and a half to two hours on one of them. That's a little long, but I don't think we even lost 10% of the people. And when it ended, you were like, oh, that was fast. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, absolutely. And I used to teach classes that were an hour and 15 minutes. And I would get going and then students would jump in. And I would have 70 students. It's actually giving me that feeling of the college classroom. Now, most like if somebody signs up today or between now and Sunday, you'll get the invitation. It's going to be on the course page and so forth. James, just so everybody could see, yeah, go so ahead. This, yeah. this is what the course is. And you and I put this together. There's some visuals to follow on the maps. Um, Ryan actually put this together, the queen of myth vision. Um, yes. Let's go to the next one. Upcoming live Q&A. So this is, it's already trying to share you the, the link to do the upcoming live. Um, that's coming up. Lecture one. And in each of these lectures, I mean, they're literally, I'm going to hit play just so people can actually see. Uh, the quality. I mean, it's you go in depth and, and explain what the gospel of Mark as Mark, what this author's trying to do, how to understand what this author's doing without letting Matthew or Luke pollute it, because that's what happens when we want to understand it. We go, well, well let's just go over to Matthew because Matthew explains these are angels. No, Mark says they're young men. Stop running to the angels. Not young men, a young man, even. So a you young man, me. exactly. Yeah. I already messed up just trying yeah. to make the example, you yeah. see. And even though I've done several videos I did with you, you know, being somewhat provocative, because I believe this, that Matthew and Luke destroy Mark, that's a strong word. What I'm trying to get people to see that if you overwrite somebody's work and you use it as a source, now there's Matthew and Luke, they see Mark as material right? That is, they have their creative project, their theological projects, and they go, oh, we got this source mark. That's the only narrative history of Jesus of Nazareth that exists on the planet, right? Mm -hmm. Think about it. Mm -hmm. That's why I call it creating Jesus. It's not everything we know about Jesus, but it's the first creation of tell me the story of Jesus, right? And right. Mark does it. Now Luke comes in, oh, I like that. I'm going to use that. Now, you could say, oh, use, abuse. Well, it depends on how you want to look at it. My favorite example is Mark. Uh, some guy says to Jesus, good master. He says, don't call me good. Only God is good. So what does Matthew do? He doesn't put that in. He rewrites it, overwrites it, rewrites it, adds, subtract, multiply, divide. So you're not actually getting Mark. You get the, if you read Mark first and then read Matthew and then read Luke, you you have a vague impression that you're getting Mark. Like, oh, I read this before. I'm getting Mark. You're not getting Mark. You are not getting Mark. Mark is a tight, structured whole. If you take this course, you're going to see this amazing outline that we follow. And you know how outlines are usually really boring, like, we all yeah. hated them in school, like, oh, God, an outline. That's going to make it even more dense. No, this is the outline of what I have come to after 30, 40 years studying Mark, of what the structure of the book as an artistic, creative work actually is. And I could be wrong on part of it, but, boy, I think I've got most of it. James, I, I'm, code, I'm telling you, you're just like, Wow. So. You, you blew me away with it. And that's like, you've kind of really made my interest in Mark even more. Like, I really need to understand this book because once you get Mark, then if you do explore into Matthew and Luke and stuff, you can start seeing things you didn't really get uh, oh, without absolutely. that. Yeah. But also, it, I just want to point this out, like for the course right here. So if you do sign up this Sunday, you're doing a live and I'll let you explain what that is. But I just want to emphasize what you get by signing up. You're helping Dr. Tabor. You're helping Myth Vision continue to educate and do these scholarly um, courses. Um, they're all in 4K, really high quality. You get a lot of reading material. Um, there's seven lectures on Mark. You go through the entire Gospel of Mark with Dr. Tabor as if you're a student in his college course, in his class. 
He gives you reading recommendation. And then there's past, we have the dates here. There's already three live Zoom recordings that have already been up. So you can go watch the past Zoom recordings, hearing the questions and the interactions with Dr. Tabor and the students. We have three there and one that is coming up this Sunday. So, and that link, of course, is going to be in here when you sign up for the course. So you can go check that out. I'm sure you're also going to send an email out to all the students just to remind and to give them everything so they don't forget. We exactly. also have an angel in your room right now yeah. who's watching that took yeah, the course as well. Is, uh, you've heard of uh, Eden. Any, anybody know Eden, the Garden of Delight? This is yes. little Eden. Eden, I'm babysitting her. She's 10 weeks old. And this was yesterday. She's looking out the window because my wife, Lori, was mowing the lawn. Lori's the gardener of the family. And when I took this, I thought, she's saying, what's up? Where's mom? Like, why am I here with dad? <laughs> and so anyway, but uh, she is a clabberdoodle, which means a border collie, which is literally just the smartest dog on the planet. Sort of. I mean, people can argue, but you know how <laughs> border collies, if they see your thumb move, they're, they're like, you know, because they have to they have to look at, you know, in, in doing the herding and all. And then a poodle, which is really a very smart dog as well. So clabberdoodles are the, all the rage now. Labradoodles, clabberdoodles and all the doodles. But anyway, this is a little doodle, and she is just amazing. She's oh. sleeping at your feet right now, so that everybody knows. Feet. She loves to hear me talk about Mark, and who knows what she <laughs> understands. <laughs> so yeah, this Zoom me uh, uh, on Sunday. Uh, I'm going to take. Uh, I'm going to try to put a lot of things together. So if you're listening now and you think, "Oh, you've already covered so much," first of all, you'll get the course. You can start it right away. And even if you don't have time to get it, it'll be a good introduction yeah. because I'm going to try it since we've done, this will be the fourth one. I want to kind of put things together for us all and see where we've come. So mm -hmm. this is really the one you don't want to miss. And it could even be a, a, a kind of a start for you then to dive into the course as well. But yeah, Mark is just so important and so neglected. And that's why the subtitles, why, why Mark was forgotten. I mean, just think of the power of Matthew for almost 2000 years, because Papias says, uh, you know, the apostolic father that it was written uh, by Mark, who was following Peter around writing down stuff and all of this legendary thing. And and that Matthew actually was the real oracles, you know, that Matthew really is the main gospel, the first one. And most scholars do think Mark was first and it makes all the difference. So you get I, I make the extravagant statement in, in the course that Mark is the most influential written document on the planet. And I think the only rival could be the Book of Romans with Paul you know, because it influenced Luther and all that, but that's theology. You know, let's face it, most people are not deeply into theology, but the story of Jesus, you know, what right. he did, just the basic kind of narrative, Mark created that. I don't mean he made it up. He had traditions and things, but he created the artistic presentation. I agree. And it is as artistic as a great director making a film, or a musician writing a symphony, and you don't want to mess it up by not listening carefully to the artist, to the creator. And so we're giving him credit. It, it'll, it'll change your perception of many things. Mainly you'll just notice things that you never noticed. Yeah. And, uh, you that know, was such you a know, Mark is the only gospel. And I'm not, I'm going to tantalize people today. Okay. Of course. Mark is the only gospel that addresses his readers directly hmm. in the gospel. Now, Luke has a prologue, but he doesn't address the reader. Uh, he addresses a reader who we think is a patron name there is Theophilus. But no, Mark addresses you, the reader. Like when you take the course, Mark's talking to you. And it's one place. And I'll tell you what he says, but I'm not going to tell you where it is. Some of you will know. 
he says, let the reader understand. Wow. And you know what the big thing in Mark is? They don't understand. They don't understand. They hear, but they don't get it. Right. They see, but they don't get it. They don't understand. Understand is the biggest thing in Mark. And you want to go, understand what? And at one point, in poor Matthew, I say poor Matthew, it's kind of funny. When he gets to that, he's like, I'm going to tell him. Yeah. So he goes ahead and tells you what it is. Is he right or not? I'm not going to tell you that. But he, he gets screams he it from the rooftops every time he can in Matthew. Yeah, yep, he does. But it goes further because you start seeing things that Matthew does. He doesn't like that Mark's saying or doing. And uh, like the way the treatment of the apostles or the disciples, really, the treatment of the disciples is like Matthew wants to, you know, well, fix how about that. no birth story and no appearances at the empty tomb at the end and no resurrection appearances. Wow. Yeah, of course they didn't like that. You know, you're going to, let me tell you the story of Jesus. And the first time he's mentioned is chapter one. It just says, and Jesus of Nazareth, and Jesus came from Nazareth down to the Jordan and was baptized by John. It's like, yeah, <laughs> and who is he? <laughs> right. And then you find out that nobody knows who he is. And that's part of the drama of the whole book. And if you, it's called the Messianic Secret by scholars. It was discovered in the 1900s by several major scholars that wrote books on the messianic secret. So what's the messianic secret? And you say, oh, it's that Jesus is the Christ. No, it's understanding what Mark thinks it means to say Jesus is the Christ. And the other big shock, Derek and I have had a lot of fun with this, is that Peter finally gets it, but he doesn't in Mark. He <laughs> gets fun. it. He goes, I got it. I got it. You're the Christ. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. What? Why? I'm not going to tell you now. This is to uh, pull you into the course because you're going to love it. So I think, you know, I hope it's not too late to sign up uh, for Sunday. And you can go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, it's instantly available, right, Derek? As soon as yeah. you sign up, they can get it. And yeah, they'll, as soon as you sign up, there's seven lectures. There's a reading recommendation page. You can download all of these 4K videos into MP3 in case you're on a walk or doing the grass. You just want to listen, you know, driving your vehicle, whatever. You can do it that way. Uh, you'll own it for life. Um, they are in 4K, so it's super high quality. Another thing, James, uh, we have three already Zoom recordings that you've done sessions. You've got this fourth one coming up this Sunday. My question about that, just kind of letting our audience know, like, what will we expect if we do sign up and we want to join that Zoom this Sunday? Can th you do something different than I've seen any of the scholars out there that do these kind of courses where you're actually l allowing them to ask like verbally, it's not like they have to just type out the question. You're yeah. actually having conversations with the chat um, and they're able to ask you like Dr. Tabor. And then they ask a question if yeah. they want. Right. It has to be, you know, it has to be limited to a certain degree because you could have over a hundred people. But right. what I do, they've sent questions and I'm going, this session in particular is going to be more trying to put a bunch of stuff together for us that okay. we've already covered. So it'll be, like I said, a good summary. Okay. But what I then do once I cover, like at first everybody's just listening and I'm talking and you can do speaker view or you can watch everybody, you know, look around or whatever. Maybe somebody's holding their dog or whatever. Maybe I'll be holding my dog. I don't know. Right. But then you do that. And then uh, people start raising their hands it's kind of like, you know, like any lecture where people line up at the microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you kind of line up at the microphone. And, you know, I have to be a good, you know, kind of Larry King MC, if you know what I mean, where if people want to make speeches or whatever, you know, I would say, well, let's get to your question, that kind of thing. So anyway. Uh, Dr. So Robert Cargill, he yeah. wants to. Learn about Mark. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he says, sign up for the course. Yeah, Robert, most of the, these kind of things are pretty well known to the scholars, but unfortunately, I think we don't teach uh, enough Mark is Mark, Matthew, Luke. Like we have a course on synoptic gospels. Mm -hmm. But you know what happens at the end of the course? It all runs together in the students' minds. Like most people couldn't tell you, like, 
Do the wise men come in Matthew or in Luke? And do the shepherds come in Luke or Matthew? And some would even say, well, Mark, maybe Mark. So, but when you just take Mark, you almost like empty your head, you know nothing. And you're going to take this course and you're going to just read Mark. You're not going to believe the difference. Don't let anything come into your head like, oh, but I already know it's this and that. And I know that Mary Magdalene came and grabbed his feet. And I know that he went on a mountain. No, you don't know any of that. You don't know anything. You don't even know who he is. Right. So don't say you know, because you don't know. It's the mystery to understand. <laughs> so I love that. I really yeah. do. I, I made a poll, by the way. So I put it down in the chat just to, I like to fill out the audience, see where people are yeah. at. And have you signed up for Dr. James Tabor's Mark course yet? And it's been a successful course. Several people have signed up for this. 11% of the viewers out of 98 votes said yes. 27% um, said, I'm thinking about it. 1%, I added this one. Wow, signing up now. And, 1%, <laughs> and then 61% said no. So, I think most of the most of the people who voted said they have not or I, I like that. That means we're not preaching to the choir then, right? We're talking to people that can get interested in this amazing document. And you know, I always say Paul's maybe one of the most certainly one of, but I would even argue the most influential, like the Southern Baptists just voted women out as pastors in the church. And you know big, huge controversy and been reading the news, maybe following that. It's even been in the New York Times. Paul, it's because of Paul, right? Paul is so influential. Some people love him, some people hate him. But influence is important. Well, Mark is very influential because he has shaped the core Jesus story for everybody for all time. And we need to understand it. And then again, you you might think, well, what a what a great mythological account of this guy that never existed. OK, or you might think, wow, Mark really understands the historical Jesus or somewhere in between, which I would find myself. Right. So uh, That's why I love That's what I love about you. Uh, if I might tease our audience again about our Mark course, you leave that you're you're the kind of professor who doesn't tell people how to make up their mind about this literature. You let them make their mind up on their conclusion about it, but you do carry this, like you don't go full myth. You don't go full. Oh, we're reading a historical eyewitness account at all. You're not even close to that. This is a literary product, but um, there's realism. There's, there's, there's something there. There's something that could be touched. And uh, of course you've done some archeological work over there and we went on our tour uh, up in the Galilee, we went to many of these sites uh, that are mentioned in this gospel. And I'm thinking, wow, this kind of does bring it to life a little bit to think about. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah, I, lo I love it. It's like Mark is the only one, uh, or he, I can't remember if he's the only one, but he mentions, uh, everybody mentions Simon of Cyrene carrying the cross, right? Who is right. Simon of Cyrene? You know, Cyrene is the northern province of Rome uh, in Africa. Uh, and yet there's an ossuary. Uh, Mark says he had two sons, uh, Alexander and Rufus. And apparently the Markan community maybe knows those people. Uh, it could have been made up, but I don't think so. And now this ossuary is turned up that has Simon and Alexander from Serene. It's at Hebrew University. I've looked at it. So anytime there's something like that, that I can just add as background, like I know what it's like to walk from Bethany over the Mount of Olives, down into the Kidron Valley and up into what was the Temple Mount. And you do too, Derek, because you wore your legs off walking with me, trying to film me. <laughs> trying to keep up with that. you. And it's a tough walk. That's like a five mile walk and he's doing it every morning. So I try to throw a little of that in you know, just to that, that it is a real place. It is real time. There, there, there are references to things that, that we can check out and kind of understand pilot's judgment seat and some of those things. So it's really, really uh, great. Also want to give credit to my teacher at the University of Chicago, Norman Perrin. 
Uh, rest in peace. If you go to my blog, jamestabor.com, there's a little in memoria thing for people I've loved that have died, teachers and others, uh, friends, colleagues, family members. And one of them is Norman Perrin. You can read about Norman Perrin. Norman Perrin was just, uh, I can't be him, but I can bring you what I learned from him. But when he would talk, he was British, that helped with that wonderful accent. And he had that look as well. He looked sort of like a cross between Sherlock Holmes and Ernest Hemingway or something. You know, he had his beard and so forth. And he would just hold forth on Mark. I'm telling you, we grad students would just sit. You could hear a pin drop as he's telling us about the creativity of Mark. And it was just amazing. And I try to bring a little of that uh as as his student and uh i love him so much he was such a great uh, new testament scholar i want to say thank you to the mods in the chat for sharing uh, james tabor's youtube channel videos there we have a couple questions super chats james if we could hit those yeah, let's um, do it. yeah. as we're wrapping up because i do want to see some people sign up it'd be awesome to see you there and to get your thoughts uh on those courses letting us know what you think so uh, first of all, we got a super, sta super sticker from Imnag, always showing up. Thank you so much for the support, my friend. That's Constel great. Constellation Pegasus. All oh, right, our buddy. <laughs> or yep. girl or gal, I don't know. I'm not going to judge. but I got the course, but haven't gone through it yet. I'm so burnt out doing all this research. I need to clear my mind to dig into it. I'm emotionally exhausted. <laughs> All right. You know what? I think you'll find it's actually refreshing for that because it's got that story unfolding quality. I'm not saying it isn't demanding and might exhaust you a little bit, but uh, take some deep breaths. Hey, cruise into the Zoom meeting if you can. And that way, you know, you can just sit back and listen and right. uh, jump in with the, you know, everybody that comes to the Zoom meeting has not finished the course. We had four or five people sign up today even before we did this. So obviously they haven't finished yet. Right, right. And Ryan's going to put up the Zoom link. I sent an email to the current students, any of you who sign up between now and Saturday, you'll get an email, plus it'll be on the course link when you sign up. So we, you, You're breaking up, James. Okay. Uh, did you hear most of that? We're losing you. Hmm. I'm okay, there you are. You're 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 kind of here now. Yeah, I don't know what just uh, internet maybe or what. So might be did my you, end. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, your end looks foggy to, or blurry to me. You there? Yeah, not, now you're frozen for me. We should have a vote. How many say Tabor's frozen and how many say Derek's frozen? So if Derek makes it back, we will continue. I'm sure he's trying to reboot or get back on. If I was breaking up, I wasn't aware of it. Uh, those of you viewing will be able to uh, tell. So we'll wait just another minute or so. Okay, really weird. Yeah, I think somehow you just vanished like Romulus into the heavens. <laughs> what in the world? My internet. Um, maybe we should try and wrap it up before my apotheosis completely takes off. Yeah, but I, I think my, uh, I think my answer to Constellation Pegasus probably came through. Okay, biblical research is not for the faint of heart. Some, most deal to follow the intellectual honesty pushed. Yeah, you're right. It does. Uh, it does. And it depends on where you come from, too, and your background and how intensive you've delved into these things over the years. Um, you know, we saw Robert Cargill 
pop on for a minute and you he did his little bio thing with you the other day yeah. which is really cool and you asked me if i would do one of those and i absolutely will in fact robert and i might even do something together on his channel to talk about that kind of thing because i think where where we come from is so much a part of where we end up i mean that's kind of obvious but especially when you're dealing with a faith a committed book like the Bible or the New Testament that you might have been raised to think of in a certain way. And then how academics and scholarship get into that. And you're dealing with big questions. So uh, I'm going to, I'm going to start a little series on my YouTube channel uh, called death and afterlife in the ancient world. It's not a course. It's just a series of right. slides I want to talk about. And uh, that's tough for people because for most people, that's like the question, like what happens when you die? Something or nothing, you know? Yeah. And I'm, I just want to, I'm going to get more philosophical with people than I usually do. I'm the Bible scholar, but guess what? Uh, I think all of us think deeply about the cosmos and about meaning and about consciousness and about science. And Derek touches on those things I know quite often. So, yeah. Okay, do we have any more? Yeah, okay. we have one more, and this is Yay, a teaser for your that. thoughts. Does 9-9, Mark 9-9, highlight that the secret nature of Jesus' identity was, according to Mark himself, not known during Jesus' life, but only after the resurrection? Yeah, I think the that's that transfiguration chapter, I believe. Uh, Let me double check. Yeah, read verse 9 specifically to me because I don't have my Bible here. Um, but I think the answer could very well be yes. You want it only in the King James because that's the true uh, untampered with no, uh, Word even, of God? I'll even take <laughs> a variation at this point. Um, and as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen yeah, until the Son exactly. of Man should have risen from the dead. Right. There are two things in there that are just so important. One's in Mark 8, but this is in the next chapter, Mark 9, is that they begin to, they want the kingdom in Mark 9. And we'll do this real fast. They, they want the glory of the kingdom. So he says to them in a really tantalizing way, uh, some of you standing here will not die till you see the kingdom come with power. So they're just totally intrigued with that. And then they have this visionary experience. And I do think that that verse nine is Mark's way of saying the own, nobody ever understood until the very end, the real nature. Uh, and right there, they don't understand the real nature because they want to see the kingdom come with power and glory. And they want to take over the temple mount. They talk about the buildings and all that. So yeah, Mark is working very subtly with that. And the tell no one is his way of saying, don't go spread the wrong view that most of you seem to have when you hear about, oh, Jesus, the great divine man, I'll hook up with him. And then when I die, I'll have eternal life. Mark actually is not gonna help you with that. Oh yeah, don't tell him too much yeah. now, James. I already... <laughs> okay. Okay, James. Well, any 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 positive words? Your disappearance, which we need to now explain the true meaning of and the underlying implications. I think we're good. <laughs> so I hope to see a bunch of people. Uh, you'll get the Zoom invitation by email from me, and if you are one of the new students, just pop me back an email and say hi to me. Uh, I'll I'll enjoy hearing from you as a new student. So awesome. Take care, take care, everybody. You as well, James. Sign up for the course and uh, just uh, keep your ears to the ground for the near future. I'll leave it at that. Is that enough there, James? Oh, am I coming to your house in July to record some things? Yeah, we've got some stuff. Yeah, I here. think I see a plane ticket somewhere on my desk here. Yes. Uh, like Mark, we're going to keep it secret, but, uh, you know... <laughs> It could leak out here and there. Yeah, I want to do, Mark's the foundation I want to build on, but I want to do some other things. Uh, I do too. Take us beyond that. 
you'll you'll get to know. But let's keep doing Mark through, you know, June, July. We'll keep working on Mark, uh, and then we'll see what what happens. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Dr. Tabor. Subscribe to his YouTube channel. Get the course. We hope to see you there, and have a wonderful day. Don't forget. Take care, everybody. Are. Myth Vision.